By 2050, there will be almost 10 billion people on the planet. The demand for food will be 60% higher than it is today. And due to climate change, we'll have fewer resources to make that food. If we don't change the way we produce our food, then we are not able to feed this population. And if we do it in the same way we did before, then uh, we probably will destroy the environment. We came to the world's leading facility for agricultural research to see how scientists here are facing up to these challenges. We tend to say we want to produce more in order to uh, feed the world, but we want to do it with less inputs, so less fertilizer, less pesticides, less energy and so on. And we want to do it better. One method that's already proven successful is vertical farming. In these type of systems, if there doesn't come any pest or disease in, you don't need pesticides. The water use is very limited because all the water that we supply to the roots will be reused. And we grow many layers above each other. We need only maybe 1% or less than 1% of the land area. But since lamps provide all of the light the plants need to grow, energy use is still a drawback. This is where Leo's work comes in. So here we're looking at an experiment with different light colors because you can see the different colors, the red, the blue, the purple. We want to use as little light as possible, but get the best plant out of it. And then the question is how much light, what moment of the day, or what color. And yeah, this is then an example of many of the colors that we are investigating. Elsewhere on campus, Rick von der Zedder and his team are designing the latest robot technology to help farmers scale up their production. If we want to scale up, we are convinced that, that automation can be a, a big benefit for farmers to simply produce more, with, for instance, with the same amount of personnel. But to be able to harvest as well as a human, these robots need the latest artificial intelligence. One of the bigger challenges is, can you determine the ripeness stage and the location of the pepper in the greenhouse or the broccoli on the field? And uh, there is this new deep learning technique that we are now using. The software guiding the arm is able to train itself, constantly improving when and how to harvest the pepper. This particular artificial intelligence technique is so promising that we can solve all kinds of problems in the upcoming years that have before been actually too complicated. There are some problems that artificial intelligence alone can't solve, however. 400 million people around the world rely on bananas for food and a source of income. But the most commonly farmed variety, the Cavendish, is under threat from a strain of fungus known as TR4. We have now TR4 causing Panama disease in Cavendish bananas that is spreading around the world. The most important reason for that is that we grow one single variety around the world, which is super susceptible. Gert Kamer is searching for new banana varieties that are naturally resistant to TR4 infection. He has already had success breeding bananas at the university, but he knows that the problem is too big to solve alone. I don't want to breed for new banana varieties in the backyard of Wageningen. Forget it, that's impossible. You really need a commercial, professional breeding program that is targeted on the consumer and that uses the latest technologies to speed it up. So what we are trying to achieve, and we are very far on track there, is to get private breeding companies involved to make new resistant varieties. The head of Wageningen University in Research thinks it will be possible to meet the world's future food needs, but it won't be easy. I'm fully confident that we can do it, but it needs governments to have a policy. It needs um, investment from the private sector. It needs to have a new generation of farmers. So a lot of things have to happen for us collectively to apply the technology, and that cannot be taken for granted. Many of the tools we'll need to feed 10 billion people are already being developed. Whether we succeed or not may depend on how quickly we can put them into action.